CA Hoops Weekly presented by Under Armour here to recap the quarterfinals here. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Coach Mac McCarthy. And Coach, it was indeed a fun afternoon and evening of basketball here at the North Charleston Coliseum. A lot at stake this afternoon, a chance to go to the semifinals, and I thought we had four intriguing games. Well, let's get to them. The first one began at noon today. Hofstra and JMU, we saw JMU play the night before with Matt Lewis and the buzzer beater, and they kind of looked comfortable on the floor after already having a game. Hofstra with a little bit of nerves, but the Pride were able to pull away in the second half for the victory. Yeah, you can debate that as a coach, whether it's better to have played a game and mm -hmm. gotten those nerves out of your system or whether it's better to be the higher seed and have that rest. But uh, Hofstra certainly looked a little bit nervous in their role as the top seed. And JMU was still playing with a lot of momentum from the night before. But ultimately, Hofstra just has too many weapons. Mm -hmm. And that one that stood out the most really was Jaquiel Taylor today for Hofstra. So the pride will advance. And who will they take? On it will be the Delaware Blue Hens, and what a game that was. That was probably the game of the day with the most storylines. The 4-5 matchup, William and Mary looked to be unstoppable. Really, they were the team coming into the tournament on fire, and then they were probably the hottest team for one half, but Delaware had an answer in the second half. What an amazing comeback as the Blue Hens advanced to the semifinals. Yeah, Tony Shaver had his group playing as well as anybody in the league. They played really good basketball down the stretch, and when they started the game, it looked like that was carried over into the tournament. But one thing about about the tournament, one game, one half in yes. this situation, you've got a puncher's chance if you've got a bunch of three-point shooters, mm -hmm. and, and you got to like what Martin Inglesby did, uh, you know, turn them loose, yep. jack it up, and they've got good balance. They're, they're coming together. They're getting everybody healthy, mm -hmm. everybody back in the lineup, and they really played well in that second half. The three-point line has changed the game of basketball. Absolutely. The freshman, Ithiel Horton for Delaware, was the difference maker for the Blue Hens today. Then the evening session, we had UNCW taking on Northeastern, and you want to talk about a dominating win, a team that probably had the most best all-around performance today. It had to be the Northeastern Huskies as they took care of business today against the UNCW Seahawks. Yeah, Bill Cohen's team, they don't beat themselves yep. ever. And you have an outstanding point guard. Vasa Pushitsa is as good as anybody in the country. He could play for anybody in the country. I love watching him play. But they've got really good balance inside, outside. They can shoot the three ball. Mm -hmm. And they don't do anything spectacular. Yep. They, don't, they are not up there dunking the basketball or making 100 threes <laughs> or, or stealing the ball every time. But everything they do is solid. And they look prepared, look like they were playing their best basketball, mostly because their whole team is healthy for the first time this season. Absolutely. We got to see Sean Osias today out there playing for the Huskies, one of those guys that was in and out of the lineup all year due to injury. Then the nightcap, it was the College of Charleston taking on Drexel, a great environment here at the Charleston Coliseum, obviously, for that one. And the Cougars, said it, was a, it was a tough task to take down the Drexel there, especially early in the second half, but they were able to pull away. Yeah, the Dragons and Cougars played two really close games, a one-pointer and a two-pointer. The road team won both regular season contests. So yep. I thought we'd see that again. But the College of Charleston is playing really good. They've won 10 of 12 now. Mm -hmm. And the two they lost were in overtime. They could yep. easily be on a 12-game winning streak. Yes. And then you add the home field advantage, if you will, just because mm -hmm. of the crowd in this building. And yep. they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. That leads us, Mac, to semifinals tomorrow. CBS Sports Network will take over. The first game will be at 6 o'clock. It will be the Hofstra Pride taking on the Delaware Blue Hens. What are some of the keys to this game as you see this one playing out tomorrow? I think Hofstra just has to relax. They're mm -hmm. really good on offense. They've been good all year. They're, they're a high-scoring team. I thought their defense was really good today. Mm -hmm. But they have a little bit of a different challenge because they run into a, a team that can really shoot the three ball, and, yep. and that's a great equalizer. But you, you kind of have to like Hofstra's chances the way they've played all season. Yep, it should be a great guard matchup. Ryan Allen, Ithiel Horton taking on Justin Wright Foreman and, and uh, DeJour Bowie. It should be a really great game. The second semifinal game at 8.30 will pair Northeastern and College of Charleston. And Mac, I think this, these two have a little bit of history, uh, even in this building. <laughs> Could they play another classic <laughs> game like they did last year yes. on one night 
later. Yep. The, and of course, they played a, a classic game just a few weeks ago. Yes, they did. At the College of Charleston, a, a wonderful basketball game that we had the privilege of doing. And uh, you talk about matchups; they're all over the floor. Yes. But Vasa Pushitsa is, uh, you know, he's the head of the snake, as Al mm-hmm. McGuire used to say. And <laughs> you know, he is going to run that team and direct them and keep them calm. And then uh, can Charleston use the emotion of the crowd mm-hmm. and uh, the hometown advantage to uh, to overcome their seed and get back to the championship round? We'll see. Yes, absolutely. Remember, tomorrow night, CBS Sports Network takes over the coverage beginning at 6 o'clock. will be Hofstra versus Delaware, followed by Northeastern versus College of Charleston. We'll be back here tomorrow night to recap the semifinals and get you ready for the championship on Tuesday night.